Hi and welcome to my channel. So I wanted to do a video on the gear that I carried with me to Mount Kenya in December last year because I remember when I was preparing for the trip being so stressed about what I was supposed to carry. I remember asking so many people even though the tour company that we were using gave us a good list I still wasn't sure I didn't understand exactly what I needed I just I had so much confusion so I watched quite a few videos online of people who were preparing for their own trips and what gear they carried and I found those videos really useful I remember thinking I wish somebody had done a video when they came back from the mountain and said you know I carried all this stuff this was the stuff I used the most this was the stuff that I didn't really think I needed I wish I'd carried this and I couldn't find any video like that so I thought why don't I do a video that's similar to that and hopefully that will help somebody else who is planning for a trip to Mount Kenya anytime soon. The most important thing to remember when you're packing your stuff is that you're going to have a weight limit because there's only so much that the porters can carry. So for the porter's bag, our limit was 15 kgs, which seems to be about average for most of the tour companies that I saw or heard of. So there are a few basic rules to consider when you're planning your clothes for the mountain. First and foremost, you want to avoid cotton. I'm sure you've heard the saying cotton kills and on the mountain it can. The reason is that cotton absorbs your sweat so it holds on to that moisture and when you're moving and you're walking, you might not feel cold because your body's generating heat. But when you stop and you're resting or you're having lunch, then you start to cool down and that moisture is sitting against your skin in terms of this damp fabric. If the weather outside is cold, then it's actually going to make you feel colder than you are. And it can actually be really serious. You can get hypothermia. So you want to avoid cotton at all costs, including your underwear and your socks. Second thing to consider is layers. The weather on the mountain can change drastically from one minute to the next. It can be cold one minute, hot the next, raining, snowing. So rather than trying to carry one big thick jacket that you'll have to keep taking on and off and on and off, you want to dress in layers. Lots of thin layers can help you regulate your temperature because you can layer up or layer down depending on what the conditions are. Okay, so let's start with tops. I carried two short sleeve t-shirts. The company that I was going with recommended one per day, but I felt like two was enough for me. I also carried two long sleeve tops. One was a thicker one. It was a thermal and I ended up sleeping in this one. And the second one I carried for use during the daytime. I had it in my day pack, but I actually only used it on summit night. For my mid layer, I carried two fleeces, one to wear around camp and to sleep in if it was very cold and the second one to hike with during the day. I like to hike with full zip fleeces because if I get hot, I don't have to remove my backpack. I can just unzip the fleece to cool down. I also carried a number of jackets. The first one is this really thin windbreaker. It's a soft shell. It's water and wind resistant, but I really love this jacket. It's small and light. It compresses really small in my bag, so I carry it all the time. I can wear it just plain over a t-shirt or what I normally do is just layer it over my fleece and then that gives me added warmth. Next, I had my puffy. I love having a puffy. I especially like having a thin light puffy. It looks like it's not going to be warm, but it really is, especially if you layer it over the other clothes. It's small enough also that I can layer it under my rain jacket if I need to. I mostly used this at camp at night, but I still had it with me in my day pack at, in the daytime in case I stopped for lunch or stopped for a rest break. For my final layer, I have my hard shell or rain jacket. Honestly, rain gear is a must on any hike, whether it's a day hike or a multi-day hike, because the weather out there is just so unpredictable, more so on the mountains. For us, it rained most days and it rained a lot of the time. So my rain jacket was really essential. I wouldn't have been able to survive without it. And I was really glad for it because it didn't only keep me dry, it also kept me warm because it acts like as a wind barrier as well. So. If I stop for lunch, it was always on the outside of my pack. It's easy to just grab and put on rather than like having to dig into my bag for like my puffy or something like that. So really, really important piece of gear. In addition to my rain jacket, I also carried a poncho. Now, I cannot lie. I really hate these things. I find them so cumbersome and half the time you don't know where your head is going. You don't know where your arms are going. You need help getting it on. I'm always like tripping on it. I stab it with my trekking poles. In fact, if you see my poncho, you see all these like DIY repair jobs. That, those are places like I've like poked holes in it. So I don't enjoy wearing this, but it was on the recommended list of things to carry. So I carried it and actually 
it was really useful because yeah you have a rain jacket and your bag has a rain cover but you know it still gives you that added extra protection against the elements so and i ended up wearing it most days i think i wore it every day actually except maybe the last day but i still carried it close to hand so if i needed it i could use it moving on to bottoms so i carried a pair of thermal leggings to pair with my thermal top and i used these for sleeping in i also carried a pair of running tights these are from decathlon they're called winter running tights so they're slightly thicker than your regular gym leggings and they're also brushed on the inside so that feels a bit like fleece and it helps to keep you warmer i carried these instead of carrying a light pair of hiking pants so i wore them on the first day because it wasn't so cold and then i layered them under my pants on summit night and when we got back to camp from the summit i wore them around camp I also carried a pair of fleece trousers on the decathlon site. They're known as fleece tights, but they're more like jogging pants. I carry these to wear around camp and if it was cold to layer over my thermal leggings when I was asleep. I also carried a pair of soft shell trousers. So these are heavier than regular trousers. They are water and wind resistant. And although they're not fleece lined, I know a lot of people had fleece lined trousers mine were not but they're quite heavy. I wouldn't be able to wear them on a hot day hike like too long or not. They just they're just too warm. And finally, I carried a pair of waterproof over trousers. For me, this was really essential. I ended up wearing them most days. They were definitely the hardest working piece of gear that I carried. If you're buying waterproof over trousers, you want to look for some that open up on the sides. And these ones open all the way up to the hip. But even if it just goes up to the knee, it's helpful because you want to be able to put them on over your boots rather than having to stop and take off your boots when it's raining and muddy. So these guys were great. By the last day, they were so dirty. They were so muddy uh, because I wore them every single day without fail, including on summit night. Now, these two things I debated for a long time whether or not to carry, mostly because they're so bulky and they're so heavy. I think combined they were like a kilo, maybe even more. And I'd never planned to carry them. I was always going to layer my clothes up even on summit night. And then I spoke to a friend of mine who'd been to the mountain a couple of times and he was like, oh, you know, it gets really cold on the mountain. You're going to need some summit pants. And I was like, what are summit pants? <laughs> he made me really scared. So I was like, oh my gosh, I need to carry summit pants. So these are summit pants. And summit pants are basically ski or snowboard pants. They are super, super thick. They're windproof, waterproof, breathable. They have built in snow gaiters, which I don't think are really functional for the rain. But anyway, um, yeah, super thick pants, as you can see. Despite the fact that I really didn't want to carry these, I used them quite a bit. I wore them most nights at camp. And I also wore them on summit nights. So I was really glad to have carried these. This guy, on the other hand, I wish I hadn't bothered. Yeah, I mean, it's super warm and thick, but honestly, it's so big and bulky that I just didn't end up wearing it very often. Also, it was raining at camp most nights, and so I ended up having to wear my rain jacket if I was leaving my tent to go for dinner or to go to the loo, which means I could only fit my skinny puffy underneath. And I was warm enough, especially because of my super warm summit pants. So I just didn't really wear this, and I don't think I will carry this again on any other mountain trek. And finally, accessories. So I carried five pairs of synthetic underwear and two sports bras. For socks, I carried quite a few. I normally double up my socks when I'm hiking. So I would normally wear a thin pair and then a medium pair. These are just padded on the bottom and that helps me to prevent blisters. So I carried four thin pairs, four medium pairs, one extra thick pair for summit night and then one super, super thick pair for sleeping in. And the plan was to wear one for each night and have one spare one in my bag in case my feet got wet during the day. But what ended up happening is I just wore one pair on day one and day two. So I rewound my socks. And then on summit night, I wore this pair. However, I was so cold. My feet were so cold. This did not work for me. So I think I'm going to have to invest in foot warmers from Amazon. I had thought about buying them and then I thought it was a waste of money. But now I wish I had because I just was too cold. And then I wore another clean pair on day three. So I ended up coming home with one clean pair and then the spare ones that were in my bag so would i carry the same number of socks i believe i would if my feet had got wet during one of the days then i would have needed to change my socks i was just lucky that my feet didn't get wet so i would definitely still carry the same number of pair of socks so when it comes to gloves everyone always thinks i'm mad but i get really cold fingers and toes because i have poor circulation so 
I have to layer my gloves the same way people will layer their clothes. So what I would do is I start with a liner pair. If you see me hiking in the daytime, I normally have a thin pair of gloves, even when it's quite warm or relatively warm. And I would just wear these and then I layer them with a pair, another pair of gloves. These are windproof gloves and these just go over like that. And then I add a waterproof layer, which is just a pair of waterproof mitts and so this way i get extra warmth but i also have and the dexterity but then i also have the, the waterproof layer and that just works like that so i use this on day one two and the final day but on summit night instead of wearing the windproof gloves i actually just layered it with uh, mittens and these are just warmer than the windproof gloves and then on top of that so these are actually waterproof but then just to give them an extra layer of waterproofness and protection from the wind I added these also because these have this faux fur cuff and when this gets wet it's really unpleasant so that just gives me an extra layer of protection if you're wondering why my mittens are looking so tatty <laughs> these guys are like 10 years old and when I came home and I washed them they just died so they served me well on the mountain anyway I also carry a spare pair of liner gloves and these just stay in my bag just in case my normal liner gloves get wet and then I have these wrist warmers these are basically just leg warmers for your wrists and these help to give me extra warmth especially because if my um sleeve rides up my wrist is still protected and for some reason i feel like when my wrist is warm then the rest of my arm is warm and so i would normally just put my liner gloves on top of these like this and then layer as usual I also carried a hat. I'm not sure why I didn't carry a wide brim sun hat, but either way you need a hat because the sun at that altitude will burn you. I carried a beanie. I just carried one and I regret not carrying a couple because on the last night I went to bed wearing my beanie and when I woke up, it was nowhere to be seen. I think what happened is I went to the loo in the middle of the night and it fell off and I couldn't find it. So I ended up having to use my buff as a temporary scarf on the way down, at least in the beginning when we were still at high altitude because it was quite cold. So I would definitely carry two. I thought about carrying a fleece lined buff, but this ended up being quite warm because my puffy had a hood, my jacket had a hood. So I think a combination of everything with my hoods my head was really okay so i'll just carry two of these i carried a balaclava and this was such a disaster despite the fact that there's this mesh here and this hole through the nose to help with breathing i think because the air was so thin at that altitude i just could not catch my breath i was walking and i just couldn't breathe so i kept on pulling this down under my chin but this space is not big enough to wear it comfortably under my chin for a long time and i just ended up having to remove it which was a bit of a disaster because my face was so cold. I had to pull my buff over my nose and mouth, but then I kept pulling it down to breathe, pulling it back up. So I'm not really sure what the solution to this is. If somebody has another solution, maybe leave me something in the comments. I don't know, maybe a thinner balaclava. I just don't know, but this was a disaster for me. Speaking of buffs, I really love buffs. I always carry one when I'm going on my hike. If you don't know what a buff is, it's a tubular scarf or neck gaiter, and you can wear it in a variety of ways. I normally wear it around my neck for sun protection or pulled up over my nose and mouth to keep them warm or to keep the dust out. And, you know, as I mentioned, I wore it as a hat on my last day as a beanie. I carried a spare one, which just stayed in my day pack in a Ziploc bag with my spare um, socks and spare gloves. And then I also carried a third one. I don't know why I carried this. It's a fleece one, so I can't hike with it. Uh, it makes me very sweaty, but I carried it to sleep in, which worked really well. But would I carry it again? I'm not sure I would, because I anyway, I had two. I didn't need a third one. I also carried a pair of gaiters. I find gaiters super useful. It rained a lot when we were on the mountain, so not only do they keep my feet dry and my socks dry, they also stop mud from coming into my shoes, scree when we're coming down the mountain, and even snow, because I remember at one point we were coming down the mountain and we were running so fast that... You're just like going like knee deep in the snow. And if I wasn't wearing gaiters, I think I would have had a lot of snow in my shoes. So I thought they were very useful. I'm not sure if they're considered an optional piece of gear, but personally, I always carry gaiters with me in my bag, even on day hikes. And finally, my hiking boots. These are one of the most important purchases you're going to make for the mountain because <laughs> if your feet are not comfortable on that mountain, you're not going anywhere. Now, I know a lot of people like to hike in trail runners and hiking shoes, but me personally, I like to have the ankle support, so I like boots. A few things to think of when you're buying your boots, you want to make sure you're sizing up to give you enough room to layer your socks, especially important on summit night. 
It also helps you when you're coming down so your toes are not bashing on the front of your shoe because you're going to lose a toe that way. It's a long way down. Another thing you want to consider is waterproofness. You want to make sure that your shoes are waterproof because wet feet on the mountain, nothing dries on the mountain and you'd be wet for like four days. So that is no fun. You also want to make sure that it has good tread. Um, because some of the places, especially where there's a lot of scree, it is really, really slippery. So you want to make sure that you have good tread. So those are three things to look out for when you're buying boots for the mountain. Another thing I carried was camp shoes, just shoes to wear at camp, because when you've been walking in boots all day, you just want to take them off and let your feet breathe. So I just carried these Crocs. I had them. They're just a regular size. You just want to make sure whatever you carry, whether it's trainers or sandals or Crocs, that you can fit whatever socks you're wearing in the evening into your shoes. I also wore these on the way to Mount Kenya and on the way back from Mount Kenya. So it's a really good idea to carry something to change into. Okay, so I think I'm going to end the video here because otherwise it's just going to be too long. So I'll do a second video on the equipment that I carried. I hope you found this video useful and click onto the second video as well to watch that. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.